So, can I ask you a couple questions? Right. Okay, uh, say your name. My name is Paul. And, um, where are you from? From Atlanta. Okay. And, um, what is the main reason that you're struggling with finding a home? Well, I'm going knocking on that simply again. Uh, where I'm at, where I'm at now. Uh, younger, when I was young, I was like a big time drug dealer. Mm. Oh, I used to deal drugs to, you know, help support my family. And it got to the point, well, when you're doing wrong and stuff like that so much, the odds are against you. You know, you got people that are jealous of you. You got you know, the police, then you got the robbers. So, we got to the point too where I said, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be low key, you know, and, and be, be one of the master of the game movies. Cause you know, I'm riding around in fancy cars and dressing nice and stuff like that. It's like I'm a target and people be jealous of you. Even though you can help them and do whatever. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what I'm gonna do? And plus I had a couple of coach calls where people had did home invasions, you know, on my wife's house. And I wasn't even staying with her, but they thought I was. So one day, just luckily I came by there, I was like by Greenbelt Mall shopping. And I said, buy me some shoes. I said, you know what, since I'm over in this direction, I'm gonna get them lunch. You know, my wife and two kids. So when I went over there, I noticed, you know, I had been visited over there one time before that she used to keep a stick in uh, the back patio, you know, because they were facing some woods. So usually when I pull in, I have my music playing, boom, 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 boom. The children run out, Daddy! But this time, didn't nobody run out. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like everybody was looking out the window and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I got real suspicious. Mm -hmm. I went to the one, you know, I could see through the crack of the blind, the back patio. So I looked, and I didn't see the stick there. So I said, mm. And then it seemed like on, I could see Sally Stella, like, um, her pocketbook was down there, and it was upside down. So. I went back to the car and got my gun and I loaded. Came in and one of the dudes came down the steps, had a gun like that. I, I uh, went up on the wall, shot him in, like in the chest and shoulder area. He had back down on, around his mouth. So then he ran out the door. So then I put him going steady. All of a sudden, another dude came running down the steps. So I ducked behind the wall again. He ain't help a gun. He just trying to get away or something. He ran out, shot at him too. So, you know, it, it wasn't like I'm scared of them, but I ain't scared of what they'll do to me, but I know one thing that hurt my family mm -hmm. and my kids, that would hurt me. Yeah. So, uh, I said to myself, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start dressing, you know, like uh, a, a drug smoker do and be out there, you know, with my pipe and all that, and be smoking, I let everybody see me smoke. And still, you know, be walking around and trying to make money, you know what I'm saying? But what happened, stopping went easy as I thought it was. Mm -hmm. And I, I just couldn't stop. Was it uh, marijuana, cocaine? Cocaine, or, yeah. yeah. And it got to the point where my whole life revolved around it. I thought I could still manage to smoke and deal, but the people, you know, they lose respect for you yeah, and people be trying and just, and then you smoking all the product up. It's hard to keep money and that's how you know where I'm at now. Homeless. What's that? I said homeless. Homeless, that's, yeah. uh, that's ended so and far. And that's yeah. my story. Mm. Wow, oh my gosh. I can totally see how that would get you here. Um, just two quick questions I want to ask you about your family and then how we can help, how people can help. Like, do you get to see your family anymore? 
Uh, I, I saw him a while uh, over the summer, but it was a while, you know, they had moved out of town, out of town, and my wife was going to college. Oh, cool. So, you know, she got, was in a relationship with some other guy, mm -hmm. but he in prison. So, you know, they moved back down here, you know. We, we done visited each other and stuff like that, but, you know. And my kids, uh, my, my daughter still stay here, though, you know. But my younger, my other daughter with her mama, mm. I think she's 12 or 13, but my, my, my daughter, 25, and she stay like I watched her roll. She what? She's 25, and she stay like I watched her roll at East Point. Watched her, okay. Yeah. Yeah, man. Wow. Um, all right, last question for you. Yes, sir. Um, how can people help best, help your situation best? Uh, all I say is just pray for me. Mm -hmm. and it's basically really up to me to, you know, stop using this and that. But it's just some, you know. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to, I've been doing like now for, I know, about 12, 13 years. You've been doing this homeless type thing for 12 or 13 years? Mm -hmm. Wow. So is shelter or food an issue? Is that hard to get? Sometimes, yeah. You run out of money, you know, you, you out of drugs, and shit. you hungry then. Yeah. Um, and then you got no money, yeah. You no know, shelter, always a problem. Mm -hmm. you have to deal with the elements out here. Yeah. Like, you know what they say, a hurricane here, they mm -hmm. win and all that. I gotta find somewhere to take shelter. Yeah. yeah. And I do it. You do it, you yeah, make it happen. Yeah, man. God, you gotta go stuff. And find good people like yourself. I hope I can help. Take the time and, and do what you did. Um. Uh, Cause like I said, you know, a lot of people say this and say that. But what a person can say anything, but what a person do, that's what that person is. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest things mm -hmm. I heard my uncle say is speak for us. Mm -hmm. Your uncle said that? Person. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, That's fantastic. I mean, he give me thank money you for to get some cigarettes and stuff. Then, you know, I call him every week. You know, he didn't ask me nothing about no drugs and that, but obviously I'm doing something. I got about this big now, this and that. And he just looked at me and said, speak for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got it. Like, I was still what he was saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Um, cool. I won't make you say any more. Um, could I get a picture of you? It's okay if not.